Hey guys, welcome back to Ostrich Investing, where our goal is to educate and debate specific stock investment ideas. Uh, Today we're going to revisit a name that we talked about in January of 2019, Brookfield Properties. The share price is down 50% since February. It currently offers a 16% dividend yield, and we're going to talk about whether that's sustainable. So let's jump into it. So Brookfield Properties is a large real estate company under the Brookfield umbrella, and it owns approximately 70 billion of primarily office and retail assets. So back in January, 2019, we profiled BPY and we specifically addressed why its shares were trading at a 40% discount to NAV. And so for an overview of the key governance and risk factors, please go ahead and watch that video first. I'll try and put a link Uh, right up on the top right of your screen. We won't review all parts of that video today. Given the 50% share price decline amid COVID-19, and of course the fact that uh, it's the most viewed video on this channel, uh, I wanted to revisit the name. Specifically, this video is going to review the following. Share price performance, 2019 results and recent letter to shareholders, leverage and dividend sustainability, and then key considerations for investors. And disclosure here, uh, Ostrich, I I do not own shares in BPY. And uh, while you're at it, please please like, comment, subscribe, share with someone. Uh, Let's try and continue to grow the channel. Okay, um, so just quickly on BPY, again, majority of the assets are split evenly between office and retail. And just highlight that from their investor day here. So if we look at the share price over the last, uh, this is over the last five years, it, uh, it hasn't been a great story for investors. You could see January 2019, that's when we did our first video. In Feb 2020, they announced their Q4 results. Um, and then in, later on in March 2020, amid COVID and uh, announcements of closures of, of Retail outfits, malls, etc., which are some of the properties that Brookfield owns, um, management provided a, an updated letter to unit holders. So at the current uh, unit price of $8.24, that's US as of uh, today's close, that's uh, a 72% discount to management's estimate of, of NAV per share of $29.72. And it's a, an approximately 16% dividend yield at the current share price. I also thought it would just be interesting to compare uh, BPY to Brookfield Asset Management, the parent company, over the last five years. And you can see that um, BPY has really been an underperformer. I didn't put the other listed entities in here, uh, but safe to say that BPY is, is the Brookfield listed vehicle that has struggled the most. So here's the letter that management wrote, and I've just picked out a, a couple of the key paragraphs in, in in my opinion. So on the office side, basically what they say is that, you know, some of the tenants in their office portfolio may face financial difficulties, but most of them are generally uh, strong, high credit quality tenants, and they should be able to continue to make payments. So they don't see a major impact on the office side, at least at at this time. So on the retail side, um, that's where it's more acute. uh, While they Similarly, talk about the quality of their uh, tenants. Obviously, with stores being closed uh, and malls being closed, it's going to be a very difficult operating environment for the retail side. And they highlight that. And then lastly, uh, they just talk about their overall liquidity. They say that they still have $6 billion of capacity and undrawn credit lines and cash on hand. Uh, And then they also talk about... um, their activity in repurchasing shares. So you can see that they've they've repurchased 6 million units over the past three weeks. So if you think about a, uh, a unit price of eight, nine dollars per share, call it 50 million of, of unit buybacks over the last uh, month or so. So if we take a look at the financials there, their full year 2019 results are out. Um, and a couple of quick things to point out. FFO per unit, and again here we're we're backing out. We're looking at the one that does not include 
gains on sales of properties. So FFO per unit actually decreased from $1.48 in 2018 to $1.39 last year, so it was down about 6%. The other thing that we'll point out here is the management fees, and again, we talked about that in our first video, uh, management fees of $159 million, plus some employee comp and some other, uh, which we don't get much granularity on. Um, and so, and, and then lastly here, given the retail asset exposure, I think it's fair to assume that FFO might be or likely will be down again in 2020. Balance sheet. Um, so BPY, unfortunately, no longer highlights their leverage in their investor presentations, at least not from what I could see uh, from a debt to EBITDA perspective. But debt remains, debt remains high at BPY. It's down from 64 billion in 2018 to 55 billion in 2019. Now, if, uh, these are all consolidated figures. So you've got to look at uh, the, their proportionate share, et cetera. Um, so I just quickly looked at it. Compared to their NOI in 2019, that operating income of 971 million, that's about 57 times NOI. I'm not even really sure if that's a stat, um, but I didn't have EBITDA in front of me and I, I didn't really want to calculate it. And compared to a company in, in Canada that I that I know well, uh, Morgard, it, it, it's got leverage of about 10 times NOI. So again, not, not really sure this is much of a stat, but the takeaway here is that BPY has a lot of debt on the balance sheet. Okay, now for the dividend. And I've snipped the cash flow statement from their 2019 annual report on the right-hand side. And uh, it, it's got a lot of lines in it. And, and so I wanted to put it, it's gonna be very small on your screen most likely, but I wanted to put the whole thing there for a reason. Um, it's actually really hard for me to follow, to be honest. Um, but let's try and go through it a little bit here. So cash flow from operations, if we if we take CFO and we add back any changes in working capital, let's call it 1.4 billion. And that's not too far off from their, their FFO, so it's not a bad place to start. Um, there's some units being repurchased there. The next thing we'll talk about is property capex of about 400 million. You can see 372 million of, of property, plant, and equipment, and that's different from acquisitions of investment properties. So you've got property capex of 400 million, and then you've got distributions of 1.3 billion. And those are all the numbers here that I've added up. And that excludes the 3.1 billion in distributions to non-controlling interests. So from a takeaway, the payout ratio is 95% on FFO alone. And it's clearly well over 100% when CapEx is factored in. Also point out that they have been buying back shares here. So they did buy back 452 million of buybacks last year. So they are backing up the statement that they believe that their, their units are undervalued. So my take here, I think the only reason the dividend hasn't been cut yet is the Brookfield spo sponsorship. Uh, Brookfield has, has a pretty long track record in Canada. Uh, the Brookfield name, Brookfield Asset Management, the other publicly listed entities have done reasonably well. And I think this would be viewed as a blemish on their, on their record. That might be one of the reasons why they've, they've held off in making a cut to the dividend. So conclusion, there's no question that BPY owns some high quality office and retail assets. And particularly if you buy into the redevelopment opportunities for some of those retail properties, and you can see that in, in their investor presentation if you want more detail. That being said, leverage is high. Uh, the dividend payout is over 100%. And the retail assets are affected, at least in the short term, by COVID-19. Brookfield's sponsorship and leverage with major banks, in my opinion, uh, coupled with the fact that they've got covenant light and property-specific financings, it might protect BPY from being, quote-unquote, forced to cut the dividend. And when I say that, I mean by the banks or, or by being offside covenants, etc. cetera. Um, but that being said, you know, BPY currently trades at a 70% discount to management's NAV, which I don't view as, I think it's untenable for BAM in the long term. So if this is, 
if this is a short term, you know, uh, COVID crisis unit price and, and three to six months later on the other side of this, the unit price recovers and we're back somewhere to a, call it a 30 to 40% discount to NAV, that may work. But if the unit prices stay down here at the 70% level, my view is I don't think that will be tenable for BAM in the long term. What they choose to do uh, is anyone's guess really, uh, but some of the options, they could cut the dividend par partially or fully and start to delever the balance sheet. Um, they could buy back shares at either the BPY or the BAM level. Could also do something a bit more drastic and uh, go private. Although, um, you know, BAM would lose management fees here. It's also a related party. Um, and so it would be a trickier, a trickier deal to get through in terms of what, what unit price would they have to offer to be deemed fair. So a couple of options there. And I think lastly, you know, governance issues highlighted in the initial video, just important for BPY unit holders to know that their interests may not be perfectly aligned uh, with management. So that's it for, for the video. I know a lot of the Canadian REITs are on sale, but um, I had uh, a comment asking for some updated thoughts on this one. And, uh, and selfishly, with BPY being the, uh, one of the more popular videos, I thought it'd be fun to go back and, and revisit. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Is, uh, is it an interesting opportunity or are the financials a little bit too uh, upside down on this one to, to, to take a look at? Uh, that's it for today's video. We'll be back soon with more content. But until then, happy investing and don't bury your head in the sand.